Competitive card awaits us at uh, Hollywood Bets at Kenilworth, uh, midweek uh, racing or early week uh, racing. This is on a Tuesday and that first of eight, uh, which means the start of the bipod, is that uh, card to get underway at uh, 10 minutes uh, to one. A warm welcome to our preview for tomorrow. We are recording on a uh, Monday for uh, Tuesday racing at uh, Hollywood Bets at Kenilworth, where we are on uh, the winter course. And I'm happy to say we're joined by uh, Darren Burrows. If there's a man who can uh, negotiate, navigate rather his way around uh, the Kenilworth uh, card that is a man himself so Darren a very good morning to you and I dare say uh, my heart is with you stiff their favorite right idea and I think is losing supporters but uh, the Sean Terry charge did everything but win uh, yes definitely right Ian you know I did have my question marks about the mile being his limit and uh, he just couldn't get into the race from his position but that's my baby, very unlucky. I knew the 1400 was slightly on the sharp side, but I thought you would get up. Yeah, let's uh, live to fight another day and uh, just jump back on the horse, so to speak. And that is a race number one where you've gone three horses. And that includes Air Raider from the Bass Table. She knows the mother well. That is an R and one very, very well at uh, generous odds of 10 to 1. And I think uh, there's a bit more to come through. Which would you be your uh, first choice of those three? Well, I've, I've got to lean towards um, this horse Air Raid. Um, I was impressed with that debut. He beat this horse, We Have Touchdown, who's running a bit later on, uh, who I think is very hard to beat. So Air Raid, and then you've got to include a horse like African Prince and World Craft into the money. All right, so that is uh, two, three, and a seven. Please be reminded that Bipod Pool closes at 10 minutes to one of the running of the first of eight. All right, so we move on to race and number two. Race two is off at 13 at 25. By the time race two runs that tomorrow at Hollywood Best of Kenilworth, I think that field would just have been announced, the final field for the 6th of July. Cape Racing Sales Maiden Plate is race two. And looking at the betting by Nicky Neko is at 11 to 10, has had a few chances. Nine. This will be the 10th outing, but certainly seems to be really banging that door down for that victory. The two walk with me, four to one, the nine approach shot. 9 to 1, 10 to 1 about the 4, Master in Colour, 12 to 1, and uh, better by those quoted runs. So that is race number 2. Uh, anything you can uh, really pick out, I know uh, there's a full brother to pocket watch from the pedigree stable, that's a 4. Not really fancy, 10 to 1. Any other pedigrees, uh, you're the pedigree man, Mr. Burroughs, anything you can pick out that might just be a forward on a debut? There's a lot of nicely bred horses. I don't see any early money for them, but like number seven, uh, versing Getrix out of Al Mufti Mare. You've got number six with a bit of speed, uh, Quirari. Uh, you've got a One World, number five. You've got a Master of My Fate, uh, interesting jockey booking with Grant for Nikak for Pete Stain. Um, so you don't know just yet. But on form, Maneki Neko looks the horse to beat. He's had, what's it, uh, six places from nine starts, two good seconds. His last start has been eight runners and zero direct winners. That is a concern, um, but I thought he was good enough for the PA. And then Walk With Me, being gulded, uh, his debut was good. He ran on late over a thousand meters. I do believe he's looking for further, being a master of my fate out of a Silvano mare. But I see Richard Faree takes the ride. So I'm going three to beat two. And then Lucy Rocket from the Andre Stain stable. I don't think this horse is out of it. Okay, but we can bank him a Nicky Neko, and that's the first leg of the PA. Off at 13 at 25 race, two outlay, 350 rand. Cape Turf Club, a maiden plate is race number three, the first leg of the pick six, and it's due to get underway at uh, two o'clock. Now in race number three, the favourite and name and mentioned already by Mr. Burrows, we'll get more from him. The seven we have touched on, 16 to 10. Nine to two is the, the nine, uh, Green Okra. And then you've got the three, Cliff Swallow. That's been uh, shortened into 11 to two from six to one, 13 to two, the four, Igugule to it's 10 to one and uh, better by those. Well, you did say you thought uh, that we have uh, touched on, has got a bit of a future 
raising of the colors of breeders who race them by the soft landing, as you also uh, suggested. And uh, the stable expected improvement last time out, and they got it. Uh, they got big improvement last time out. You know, his debut was a bit below par, um, just no show. And last time out, I watched that replay, Air Raid cruised to the lead, and this horse switched inwards and came with a flying run down the inside. He was 12th at the 400. He got beat under half a length. And I think that form line could stand up because I think there was one or two smart youngsters in the race. So if he can repeat that performance with Richard Faree sitting closer to the pace, uh, this horse could run away from them. So I've taken my chances in the pick six, number seven, a banker. If I had to put one in with him, it would be a Google Air 2. I know he's had nine starts, but some of his form lines were strong. That third behind Riverstone in a 20 horse field, there were five direct winners. Um, his last start, he tried a mile. It was too far. Um, I just get the feeling this could be the right type of race for him to run in the top three. So seven to beat four, um, seven a banker in the pick six. Thank you very much. The banker comes about at the get-go of that pick six. 2,520 rand and that uh, get-go is accorded for two o'clock. We now approach uh, the uh, start of the first of two jackpots being an eight-racer program, and that is race number four. Now, this is an open maiden, and it's over the 1,600 metres in this uh, open maiden. Just having a look at uh, the uh, betting for race uh, number four. The uh, distance is uh, 1,600 metres, and your favourite in a race uh, number four is uh, Groove Jet, the seven, and that is currently priced up at 28 to 10. Title at the top, the six, Greenland, is at uh, 33 to 10, and then it's five to one in from 11 to two, about the four. Apache Chief. So we've got a uh, maiden handicap. How do we go about uh, negotiating this? The seven groove jet in the colors of Greg Bortz. Uh, JP gets a ride for uh, Justin Snaith. Uh, that is uh, currently at the top of the boards, 28 to 10, Mr. Burrows. Um, I thought this race could be wide open. You know, groove jet does uh, carry uh, 61 kilos, um, has the form to win. His last start behind Prince of Tibet, he was even money. And there's been six runners for zero winners. That has to be a concern, but he's going to enjoy the step up to a mile. Uh, you got Greenland. He's been very disappointing. He was backed in from seven to two into 11 to 10. Second runners at Golding last time out. Nine runners, zero winners. Um, that's the reason why I played wide here. Apache Chief. He's got in and out form, but on his day, he can quicken up well. You've got Gripen or Grippen from the Woodruff stable. Um, this will should improve further over this trip. Made headway late last time out. Um, you've also got a horse like We Have Situation. Ran third behind St. Bridget, only 52 and a half kilos. And then Sansa Stark, also right there, but had 11 starts. The improver could be Black Cherry. I know he came to the race course with a reputation with Mike DeCock back in 2022. He's had one run in two years, and that was recently. He ran fourth to Tambourine Man. There's been a winner from the form line. Mm -hmm. If not in need of one more run, uh, Black Cherry could be the improver in the race. So basically just one, two, and three would be ones that you don't really take that serious and the nine mo yay, but the rest are certainly on paper and uh, by your assessment have uh, winning chances. But the favorite is the seven group jet at 28 to 10 in leg one of jackpot one. Okay, so we're getting into a race uh, five. This is the way to win for Tuesday racing at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, where we're racing on the winter course, proudly brought to you by Betway. And uh, looking at uh, the betting for this Cape Sea Stakes, we've got a three to one favorite in the form of the three year old, number 10, Prime Venture, number two, Fair Advantages at 72, bracket at 72, with the three, My Bestie, back to form, has been edging back to form in uh, recent times. The six King Pele's is at 15 to two, eight to one, and uh, better bar those. Well, the first First thing that sticks out about my best is a certain Cal Forrester, Mr. Burroughs, who's certainly been in good form. Two wins back to back. 
Yes, you know, a lovely horse to own, Cobb Forest. Um, he's really improved a lot lately. Um, this horse, my bestie, he's had two comeback runs after a short break. A good fifth, three lengths off in a class four. Last time I turned into the straight stone last, flew up behind Cobb Forest to get beat two and a half lengths. His rating has actually come down from a 104 to a 73. So this is the right race for him to win. And um, I just get the feeling uh, this could be a confidence boost for him in this type of company. Um, dangers, fair advantage has a chance. A horse like King Pelez could improve on recent form. And then a horse like um, Prime Venture, I don't think he's out of it. He's lightly raced and a jockey booking of Richard Foree. But I'm having a bet on my bestie. I think he could have one more in the tank. And of course, my bestie has that uh, good draw this afternoon, unlike the 13 from 13 last time out, three out of a field of 11. So certainly looking uh, a very good proposition indeed. My bestie, value bet for, win bet rather, for uh, Darren in race number five, a win bet at around 72. Let's go to a very, very uh, competitive uh, middle stakes. That'll be race number six over the 1,400 metres. And uh, the uh, computer form actually featured the uh, favourite on uh, the cover. They reckon uh, won a feature over the 1,400 and is back to its uh, optimum trip. Louis gets the ride once again. Princess Izzy for the uh, stable of uh, Brett Crawford is at 33 to 10, 9 to 2, the 3 fun zone, 5 to 1, the 2 school policy, 6 to 1 about numbers of 5 Sidley and uh, the 9 who will go. It's 13 to 2 and uh, better by those. Do you share the sentiments of computer form that uh, Princess Izzy could uh, bring that uh, feature win form over course and distance to uh, the uh, top again in race 6? Definitely, you know, she's a big runner. Um, she beat enemy territory, what was it, a length and a half. Yes. And um, they come in at the same weight once again. And I actually liked a bit of enemy territory uh, because I liked that sprint up over 1,200 last time out. I don't think there's going to be much between those two, numbers 6 and 10. I've included both of them into the exotics. Um, fun zone got beat half a length by school policy. She gave school policy four and a half kilos, and now they meet at level weights. So you've got to favor fun zone over school policy on that alone. You've got Sidley, a good filly. Um, she could, uh, her limit's probably 1,400. She's got three lengths to find on Princess Izzy, but she's three kilos better off at the weights. And then we're good. Um, she's up in class. Richard Faree takes a ride, but a handy galloping weight. So this race could be more open. Um, yeah, it could be very open. All right. Two, three, five, six, nine, and uh, 10. It's uh, the uh, favorite at 32 to 10, number six, uh, Princess Izzy. Right. That is race six off at uh, 17 minutes to five. That'll be a last chance to get involved. 17 minutes to four, rather. Last chance to get involved in a pick three. Right, to the uh, penultimate, and of course, the last chance to get involved in a double is a Cape B stakes, and it's an average merit rating of 86 for this 1,400-meter uh, event, and the favorite is the three aspect at 3 to 1. The six or Oliver is at 4 to 1. 9 to 2 is a 4, Fibonacci. Also 9 to 2 is the 8, Call Me Gatrix. It is 6 to 1, the 1, uh, Kariaku. Uh, and then it's uh, 10 to 1 and uh, better bar those. Scratched is a 10, a Kijikau. And that's the only scratching we have on the card at this uh, early stage. So that leaves us a field of 11. And Mr. Burrows, uh, where are your loyalties in this uh, Class B over the 1,400 metres? I see Fibonacci uh, hardly puts a foot wrong with uh, Aries aboard. He seems to get a tune out of her. Uh, yes, you know, there, is, there are a couple of runners here with uh, decent form. Now, I want to start off with Carioca. Um, I actually um, put an offer in because I want to purchase this horse before his last start. I thought he has ability, but he's just not putting it in. And uh, right after that, he won a cracking race. Um, he actually won with a ton in hand, and he showed his ability. And I'm hoping he can follow up once again because he only got a four-point penalty 
and he's got a handy galloping weight and a one draw. So Karyako is going to be my narrow first choice, but not one to trust really. I'm just hoping he can reproduce his last start. You've got Aspect going for five in a row. I mean, this will struggle to win a maiden. I think he had a wind up or something uh, that he was off for six months, but um, it's definitely come well because he's gone start to finish in his last four starts. And Richard Fury uh, retains the ride this time around. He beat Oliver by 0 0.4 lengths. Uh, that was on the 23rd of March. He gave Oliver half a kilo, and now he gives Oliver a kilo and a half, which brings Oliver into the race with a big chance. I think the 1400 is going to suit him too. Uh, Fibonacci got beat under a length by Aspect last time out. He's also in with a big say. And then call me Getrix, the filly in the race. She's got fair form, handy galloping weight. She could get involved. So I've included all of those runners, one, three, four, six, and eight. Each way play, six to one is the one carrier coup, and that is the Eric Sands and the Craig Zaki. Craig Zaki, this will be his second ride ever upon this uh, four-year-old son of Captain of All. Also, last chance to get involved in a double, and it's an off time of 22 minutes past four. Lucky last should get underway at uh, five for two five. Hopefully, it is a lucky last uh, for some. Hollywood bets a brighter future class five. It's over the 1100 meters. And the favorite is the three shifting path uh, from the pit board to stable with uh, Louis Mcloto aboard. He's ridden it twice for a win and a second. Uh, that is at uh, three to one, uh, two to one rather. Three to one is the two tambourine man. Number five, uh, Wiley Jack is at five to one. Seven to one is the six, uh, Champagne Mac. Number one, Gravity is at 10 to one along with the nine, uh, Mr. Frosty, also 10 to one. 14 to one and uh, better about those. It is a get out of its stakes, Mr. Burrows. Which way are you pointing us in? Well, um, I found a bit of value on a horse called Gravity. He's currently 10 to 1 in the betting. His ratings down from an 82 to a 66 within a couple of starts. He beat Riverstone in his maiden when they fitted blinkers on him. And he was super impressive that day. I know that was that ladies race, um, but he won well. Then he disappointed for a couple of starts. He changed stables. He's finding his form slowly again. Three lengths Grand Bay, four lengths Shifting Path. He gave Shifting Path two and a half kilos, and now he receives a kilo and a half. So that's a four kilo swing in uh, gravity's favor. And last time out, he was behind Cub Forest. I thought the 1400 slightly on the far side. So gravity, 1100 meters. I think he should be in the top three, by no means a good thing. Um, shifting path is in good form. He'll be right there at the finish. And the source tambourine man, he took a while to win his maiden, but of his rating of 65, he could follow up in this type of company. So let's uh, running it all off for uh, Mr. Burrows. Uh, race three, number seven, a win. And race five, number three, my bestie win. And then uh, you can actually go the conservative route, the one uh, carry, carry a coup, a place, and uh, the uh, one in race eight, gravity, a place as well. And that would be a nice all to come. 